What's up, watchers? I'm C.T. Reese, and I am, well, I'm sitting here nervous. I'm excited. I'm experiencing all sorts of emotions. I'm getting ready to go see Alien Romulus. Now, you probably know this is the newest from Fidi Alvarez. He brought us the very bloody and brutal Evil Dead in 2013. He followed that one up with the shocking home invasion horror Don't Breathe in 2016. And here, an alien Romulus from the trailers. It looks like we've got a group of youths here that are gonna break into a presumably Wayland yutani owned facility and looks like they end up letting loose a whole mess of nasty face huggers. Alien Romulus is easily my most anticipated movie of the year, but it's also the one I'm most nervous to see. I, I gotta be really honest here, I've never seen a movie from the Alien franchise in its first run in a theater that actually blew me away. I'm like most people probably watching this, too young to have seen Alien in its first run, and same goes for Aliens, and obviously those two are the classic. They really stand above the rest of the franchise that have been trying to hit those heights again for almost 40 years. So Fidi Alvarez, he's gonna take a shot. He's at the helm here, and we're guaranteed with him we're bringing this thing firmly back into the horror genre. So I'm excited about that. I think the horror aspect has been lacking from the franchise for quite a while. Aliens brought a lot more action into the mix and the franchise is really focused on that, I think with some of the later entries, but we're going fully back into horror. There's no doubt about it. We're gonna have body horror here. It looks like we're gonna have confined quarters in this derelict ship. The relentless nature of the Xenomorph, I think is definitely gonna be here. You know what, I, I'm trying to keep my expectations tempered, but then I watch the trailer again, I just get so pumped up for the possibilities here. The horde of face huggers charging down the hallways, it just gets me pumped up every time I watch this freaking trailer. It's one of the coolest and scariest things I've seen in a while. It makes me think of playing Halo when that first came out, the first time I dealt with the flood and just getting ruined over and over again. That's what these face huggers remind me of. So anyways, you know what? Enough of me trying to get my anxiety out here before I go see this one. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go see Alien Romulus. I'll be right back, and I'll let you know what I think of it. All right, I'm back, and wow, what a ride that was. Thank you, Fidi Alvarez, for giving me the best first-run theater experience I've ever had for an Alien film. So right off the bat, just a huge win there. Now, was this a perfect film? No. Was this the best Alien film that's been released in decades? Absolutely yes. And you know what, kudos to the marketing team as well for putting out a trailer, or a couple trailers I guess really, that didn't spoil the entire movie, but still got me excited to go see the film. Now as expected, this was absolutely a return to horror for the Alien franchise. I don't think it went quite as far into pure horror as the original Alien movie, but it's certainly the closest thing we've had ever since. Now, if you're looking for body horror from your Alien films, well, this one is absolutely gonna give you what you wanna see. Now, nothing for me is ever going to beat the original chest burster scene, but there are definitely some top five scenes in this one for sure. And overall, I'm just so happy to see that this 45-year-old franchise still has some legs and can still bring the scares. Those first two movies were such just important parts of me getting into sci-fi and horror, and it's really been a bumpy ride for the Alien franchise since then. But as soon as this one started up, and I saw that old familiar font in the opening credits, I knew I was in good hands. Now, going in, it was made clear that this film would take place between Alien and Aliens, but I wasn't expecting it to be so connected to the original film. I was really impressed with how Alien Romulus was able to connect itself to the existing franchise almost seamlessly. Going forward, I could absolutely see myself watching these movies in the order of Alien, Alien Romulus, and then Aliens. Actually, you know what? No, scratch that. I can't freaking wait until this one gets released on 4K so I can lock myself in a room and marathon this new trilogy. And I think it works that well in the context of the existing franchise. Now, the overarching story here following Rain and her synthetic Andy, it grabbed me right from the start. They're immediately sympathetic characters, and when presented with the opportunity to escape their current world and their current situation, their decision to go along with the risky operation of breaking into the old Wayland yutani facility floating just above their world, well, it makes a lot of sense. And I should also mention that these two actors were both just absolutely fantastic in their roles. 
Kaylee Spaney as Rain, she continues the tradition of badass leading women in alien films. Now, David Johnson playing synthetic Andy, it's tough to talk too much about him without spoiling things, but let me just say that for the role of a synthetic, he certainly has to express more emotions than you would think, and I just left the theater very impressed. I was also glad to see the Alien franchise return to its roots a bit with a film that's primarily set in one location and with a limited cast. I think the runtime of just under two hours was absolutely perfect for this one as well. The pacing was great throughout and it never overstayed its welcome. There was no point in time where this movie dragged for me. So from that perspective, it does differ from the original Alien, which I think took just a bit more time to allow the dread to sink in, whereas this one is a faster paced production. It's almost like a more efficiently cut Aliens. Now, I love James Cameron, but let's be honest, I don't think that guy's made a movie in under two hours since the original Terminator. Now, I was extremely happy to see that this movie understands the real enemy is Wayland yutani It's another one of those stories where we've got an alien creature just acting in its very lethal nature, we got a bunch of people trying to survive, and we've got the company sort of just putting its thumb on the scales for its own benefit. At the end of the day, this franchise has always been at its core about this company trying to get its hand on this perfect being in order to exploit it for its own gain and profit. So unsurprisingly, the company's plan here is equally as horrifying as what we've seen them get up to in the past. And you know what? I just feel really bad for anybody that is unfortunate enough to have to work for Wayland yutani Now, as far as the effects go, holy shit, they were incredible. Now, as I said before, the body horror is definitely back here in full. You're gonna see some extremely gross things going on here with some of these poor youngsters. And you know what? I've also gotta give a shout out to some of the inventive alien designs included in this one as well. I think they would have made H.R. Geiger proud. The face huggers, they also came across just as frightening as I'd hoped. They were truly anxiety inducing. And of course, once they grow up to be full size, it just gets worse from there. Now there were some digital effects that I didn't love, but I'll get back to that in a bit because I've got even more good things to say about the production design here because it's just killer. Now there are a ton of nods to the original Alien films with a lot of the design. The Nostromo in the original Alien movie was, for example, towing a mineral ore refinery. And here we've got a planet in Alien Romulus that's a mining planet. So it makes total sense that the ship these kids would be on looks in many ways like a mini Nostromo. It's got the retro futuristic design with the real buttons and the switches as opposed to the touch screens. And when you combine that with you know, some graphics that look like they came from the original movie, it really gave me those throwback space trucker vibes. Now, I could also say the same for the sound design. Every Alien fan is instantly gonna recognize the sound of the ship's computers calculating, but they also did a really good job poaching existing scores from this franchise and using them throughout. It was maybe even a bit heavy-handed at times, but I think most people are gonna appreciate it, especially if they're fans of the franchise. And speaking of that, let's talk a little bit about fan service. I think if this movie is going to be divisive at all, it's gonna be with the amount of fan service that's included in this film. Now, we knew there were gonna be nods to Alien and Aliens, but now I know why Ridley Scott was so hyped up on this one. I didn't expect it to give any nods to Prometheus, but it absolutely did. And most surprisingly, there were even connections to Alien Resurrection, I think. I almost couldn't believe it when it was happening, but Feedy really seemed to want to include as much of the existing Alien lore here as he could. Now, while this is certainly a strength of the movie in that it feels so much more like an Alien film than anything we've gotten in so long, and I'd even include Prometheus and Alien Covenant in that, I could absolutely see some people perhaps thinking it may have gone a bit too far. I think, for example, the science officer's design was just a little bit jarring at times. I think a performance that didn't require so many digital effects would have come across as more natural. Outside of that minor nitpick, I think if anyone's gonna criticize this movie, those criticisms are probably going to come from the second half of the film. So I don't wanna get into those details at all, but let me just put it this way. I can't imagine that anyone wouldn't enjoy the vast majority of this movie. I know I'm trying to keep this really vague. I'm trying to keep it as spoiler free as possible. I'm really interested to see what people's reactions to some of the things that Alien Romulus builds up to in the final act of this movie are. I wanna see if it's gonna be divisive. I was along for the ride, but as I was watching it, I was 
kind of thinking, man, I, I wonder if everyone's going to be as into this as I am. I'm really still trying to unpack what I just saw, and I'm 100% going to have to see this one again, probably two or three more times, because there's just no way I caught every single reference and all the lore that was referenced here. But anyways, I should ask, what did you all think of Alien Romulus? Did it meet your expectations? Did it fall short? I'm extremely interested to hear the community's reaction in this one, since I clearly enjoyed it so much, I know it's going to end up as one of my top films of the year. So let me know, and also if you dug this review, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons as well. I'm stoked to finally check out Oddity next week, since that one's finally hitting VOD, so expect a review for that one, and now all month I'm looking back at some of my favorite siege horror films as well. I don't think you're going to want to miss out on all that, so until next time, don't forget to keep it rad.